This video is a continuation of part 1 of Frames of Reference presented by Madhikeshwara RS, Assistant Professor of Physics. The content shown here are explained in this video. We know that all accelerated frames are non-inertial frames. A non-inertial frame is a frame of reference in which the Newton's laws of motions are invalid. To prove that, let us consider a uniformly accelerated frame in rectilinear motion. Let a frame S prime be moving with a constant acceleration A naught with respect to an inertial frame S. Now let us consider a material point A as shown here. If A is at rest with respect to S, then it appears to moving with minus A naught with respect to S prime. If A is moving with an acceleration E with respect to S, then it appears to moving with A minus A naught with respect to S prime. Then the absolute force on E with respect to S prime is given by F prime is equal to M into A prime, where A prime is the acceleration of the particle E with respect to S prime and is given by a minus a naught. Therefore, F prime becomes MA minus MA naught or it is given by F plus F naught where F is equal to MA is the force on the particle A with respect to S. Therefore, it is clear that the force on the particle A with respect to S prime is not same as the force on the particle A with respect to S. Therefore, S prime is non-inertial with respect to S. In other words, all accelerated frames are non-inertial in nature. A fictitious force is a force that appears to act on every object when the frame of reference is accelerating. In order to obtain the expression for the fictitious force, Consider a frame S prime moving with a constant acceleration A naught with respect to an inertial frame S. Now consider a particle A moving with an acceleration A. Then the absolute force on the particle A with respect to the frame S prime is given by F prime is equal to M into A prime where A prime is the acceleration of the particle with respect to S prime and is given by A minus A naught. Therefore, F prime becomes MA minus MA naught or which is equal to F plus F naught. The force F naught is equal to minus MA naught which appears to be acting on the particle A even though there is no force on it in the frame S is called fictitious force or pseudo force. A fictitious force is a force that appears to act on every object when the frame of reference is accelerating. It is also called as pseudo force or inertial force. It is important to know the following facts about the fictitious force. The term fictitious does not mean the force does not exist, but it does not arise from an interaction between objects. It is a frame dependent force. It is always directed in a direction opposite to the motion of a non inertial frame. It is always proportional to the mass of the object upon which it acts. Examples are Coriolis force, centrifugal force, and Euler force. Now let us consider some classical examples of fictitious force. Inside an accelerating car, everything appears to be accelerated backward by the same amount.
inside a turning car, everything appears to be accelerated to the other direction by the same amount. Now let us consider an illustration of fictitious force such as a freely falling lift. Let S be an inertial frame and S prime be a frame moving with a constant acceleration in naught downwards parallel to y axis. It's nothing but a lift. Let G be the acceleration of a person P of mass M with respect to S and G prime be the acceleration with respect to S prime that is with respect to the lift. Then the distance travelled by S prime in a time t is given by O O prime is equal to of A naught t square. From figure you can write y is equal to O O prime plus y prime which is equal to of A naught t square plus y prime. Therefore y prime is given by y prime is equal to y minus of a naught t square. The differentiation of the above equation with respect to time twice gives d square y prime by dt square is equal to d square y by dt square minus a naught or is given by g prime is equal to g minus a naught where g prime represents the acceleration experienced by a person in a lift or in a frame s prime. Now, if the lift moves downwards with an acceleration g or when it is freely falling, then a naught becomes g. In this case, the apparent weight of a person in a lift becomes mg prime is equal to mg minus m a naught. If we replace a naught by g, then mg prime becomes zero. Therefore, the force acting on a person in the lift becomes zero or the person in the lift experiences weightlessness. If the lift moves vertically upwards with an acceleration a naught, then the apparent weight of a person in the lift becomes mg prime is equal to mg minus m into minus a naught which is equal to mg plus m a naught. Therefore, the person feels an increase in weight while ascending. Now let us consider one more illustration of fictitious force such as a pump line accelerometer. Let a simple pendulum be suspended from the roof of a carriage moving along a straight line with an acceleration A0. Then the carriage can be regarded as a non-inertial frame. Hence the pump line will be acted upon by a pseudo force f prime is equal to minus m a naught and hence it inclines at an angle theta with the vertical. In this position the tension t, the weight mg and the pseudo force f prime will be in equilibrium position with respect to the bob p. If theta is the angle made by the pump line with respect to the vertical when the carriage start to move, then the angle made by the tension T with respect to the pseudo force becomes 90 plus theta and the angle between the pseudo force and the weight of the bob becomes 90 degree and the angle between the weight of the bob and the tension in the string becomes 180 minus theta. Since the forces T, F prime and Mg are concurrent and coplanar forces, then according to Lamy's theorem, we can write F prime by sine 180 minus theta is equal to T by sine 90 is equal to Mg by sine 90 plus theta. Or it is given by M A naught by sine theta is equal to T by 1 is equal to Mg by cos theta. Therefore, the acceleration of the carriage A0 is given by A0 is equal to G into sin theta by cos theta 
which is equal to g into tan theta. Thus, by measuring the angle theta, the acceleration of the carriage can be determined. The setup is called accelerometer because it is used to measure the acceleration of the moving carriage using the concept of pseudo force. It is a fictitious force which acts on a particle in a rotating frame of reference. It is numerically equal to the centripetal force but directed oppositely. Together with the centripetal force, it keeps the body in equilibrium in the absence of other forces. The centrifugal force in vector form is given by the magnitude of centrifugal force is same as that of the centripetal force. Its direction is opposite to that of centripetal force. It is a fictitious force which acts on a particle in motion relative to a rotating frame of reference. It is proportional to the cross product of angular velocity of the rotating frame and the velocity of the particle. The Coriolis force is given by minus 2m into omega cross v. Its direction is always perpendicular to the plane containing both omega and v. Coriolis force is zero if the particle is at rest or if the frame is not rotating. Since the earth is rotating uniformly about its own axis with an angular speed of 0.0042 degree per second from west to east, a reference frame fixed on it is clearly a rotating frame of reference or a non-inertial frame. As a result, the fictitious force act on a particle at rest or in motion with respect to the earth's surface. The centrifugal force due to rotation of the earth reduces the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth and also to change its direction slightly. Coriolis force is responsible for cyclones and hurricanes. Coriolis force affects the motion of the atmosphere around the center of low and high pressure. If there is a low pressure region in the northern hemisphere, then the air rushes inward in all directions. As the earth rotates, the air rushing from south moves a bit ahead, while air from north lags a bit behind the imaginary line drawn on the rotating earth. As a result, air rotates in the anticlockwise direction around the low pressure center and forms a cyclone. Same is the case with the air rushing from west and east.